Hey guys, welcome back to the Suppressor Engineer channel. Today we have a video that I've been wanting to do for a long time. We're gonna measure the sonic boom of bullets. We're gonna test and see if different shapes of bullets will affect the sonic boom downrange. This is gonna be a fun one. Uh, we're gonna test out 22 long rifle, and then we have a couple different flavors of 308 Winchester. We have a flat nose bullet, and then we have a, a boat tail, full metal jacket, 308 bullet we're gonna try out. 6.5 Creedmoor, 5.56, nine millimeter. So how this test is gonna work, we have a sound meter about 30 yards down range. And the purpose of the sound meter is to capture the bullet going past the sound meter. The bullet will be one meter to the right of the sound meter as the bullet passes. And what that is simulating is that's gonna simulate tests that we do at the muzzle. When we do sound testing at the muzzle, what we have at the muzzle is we have the sound meter one meter to the left of the muzzle, 1.6 meters off the ground. So we're simulating that same setup, only it's 30 yards down range, so we can capture the sonic boom of the bullet, and we're not gonna be capturing the muzzle blast of the gun. How do we know that the muzzle blast from the gun won't affect it down range? Well, there's something called the inverse square law, and what that simply means is for every doubling of distance, the decibel drops six dB. So from the muzzle, to the time down to the target, about 30 yards, it's gonna drop about 30 decibels. The muzzle blast will drop 30 decibels. So that way it will be significantly lower than the sonic boom of the bullet. So we'll know that the muzzle blast is not affecting our sound meter reading downrange. Also right here beside me, we have a chronograph so we can get bullet velocity readings as well for every bullet. So we're gonna get the bullet velocity and we're gonna get the sound of the sonic boom down range. And we're gonna write those numbers up. We're gonna do three rounds for each bullet. So we'll get a little bit of an average there with those three rounds. So we can get a little more accurate representation of what the sonic boom will be and also what the average velocity will be. So with that being said, let's get this test started. Okay guys, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do three rounds through each firearm. We have just a, 10, a Ruger 10 22, uh, 18 inch barrel, I believe this is. We have it suppressed, so we further reduce the muzzle blast. Chronograph, and we'll do three shots, and we'll see what we get here. So, range going hot. All right, that's it for the 22. Okay, last one, you guys. Okay, guys, so we just got done shooting the sonic boom test here. And any of you guys who might be in the aerospace or know a lot about engineering and aerodynamics and sonic booms, you probably knew ahead of time that the shape of the bullet didn't really matter that much. It was only, well, it didn't matter at all, rather. It was only the area of the bullet in a two-dimensional plane. So what I mean by that is the 22 long rifle is the smallest diameter bullet. The 9 millimeter was the largest diameter bullet. And our results show that the sonic boom down range, the 22 was the quietest overall. It had a decibel reading of 151.7 average. And our 9 millimeter was the loudest sonic boom down range and it was 156.4 decibels. Another note I wanna add, our 308, we had the full metal jacket bullet, and we also had the 308 flat nose uh, hollow point bullet. I noticed that our grouping down range, the full metal jacket was a much tighter grouping than that uh, flat nose bullet, 
And we saw that in the decibel reading. The full metal jacket, which had the tighter grouping, was 154.7 decibels. And the flat nose 308 was 155 decibels. So 0.3 dB difference there. And that was simply because the flat nose bullet had that bigger group which tells me that the bullet was oscillating in flight. And that tells me that the area that it was displacing in air was a little bit larger than the actual diameter of the bullet. So that was going to skew our results a little bit. So the precision of the bullet will affect your sonic boom and the diameter of the bullet will affect your sonic boom. And those are the only two factors that affect the sonic boom downrange. Another note, I want to talk about the 9mm. If you notice, when we were shooting, the feet per second was 1,204 feet per second, pretty close to the muzzle for the 9mm. Now, we were shooting about 30, 30 yards down range here, and I noticed that our DB reading was way off on the 9mm. What that tells me is the bullet was slowing down by the time it got to the target, so it was in the transonic phase of flight. What that means is a nine millimeter slowed down by the time it passed the sound meter to the point where it was no longer supersonic, it was transonic. And transonic means that the bullet is going slower than the speed of sound, but the air going traveling around the bullet, because there's a curvature on the bullet, the air had to speed up to get around the bullet and that air was going supersonic. So you get these tiny little shock waves coming off the bullet. So you get like a, I don't know how to explain it, a, a halfway sonic boom. So what we had to do to get an accurate result with the nine millimeter is we went down closer to the target. So we made sure that that bullet was still supersonic when it was going past the sound meter. I hope this video helps explain the factors and what makes a sonic boom for every bullet in flight. Your different diameter bullets is going to be your key player as well as the accuracy of your grouping. The tighter you can keep that grouping, the lower your sonic boom will be. I hope you guys like this video and stay tuned for our next one.